Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real honor to be here in this special location uh, to tell you something about uh, uh, climate policy in the Netherlands and what our institute is doing in it. Um, a few weeks ago, two weeks, about two weeks ago, there was an industrial representative from the area of the Rotterdam Harbor who presented on television a plan of a group of companies uh, to reduce CO2 emissions by CCS, about five megatons in a later phase, maybe more. One person here is going to tell you more about the details of this plan. Um, in the evening, he had to go to a meeting to discuss Dutch uh, climate policy. There was a young lady the same day going to the same meeting with a bag full of ideals. And she wanted to give a presentation of her ideas of the future, the NGO ideas of the future. It was a future with renewable energy, with no place for CCS. So that makes it quite interesting. The meeting is not finished yet. It's a starting up uh, a series of meetings to, to come to some sort of agreement. I will tell you later about it. But the role of our institute is to be some sort of a referee in that process. And uh, you can see here are the instruments we use in that regard as the referee to show if they're doing well or if they're not doing well in regard of the policy targets that are set. Okay. I have to... Here's the referee we are in this case. Uh, although I'm not a, a climate scientist, I want to start with to tell you something about, uh, about uh, climate and the, the impacts that it, that it has. Here you see some of the impacts, you recognize probably most of it, it's not quite new. But what is more uh, difficult is uh, to find out what the real severeness of these impacts can be in, in future. Um, and how it's related to, to temperature rise. Uh, I'll show you some results of the IPCC. Here you see the, the temperature rise in uh, scenarios with bus in business as usual scenarios, you could say. It's going up to about four degrees temperature rise. And now we, it, we're trying to assess the, the impacts that these temperature rise has. Uh, and there are different kinds of impacts on unique systems, local impacts towards more global impacts on whole regions. Uh, and the darker the color is, the more severe the impacts are, the higher the risks. So we cannot exactly predict with a certain temperature rise what the impact will be and what the cost will be of those impacts, but it will be more severe. The, the risk will be higher, as you see. Already now we're in the neighborhood of, in, of about one degrees temperature rise. So there are already some risks are coming up. Uh, but you also see in the business as usual that the risk might be very severe. Um, how are th those risks related and the temperature rise, how is it related to greenhouse gas emissions? We cannot do something about temperature rise, we can do something about greenhouse gas emissions. Here you see the, the total uh, amount of megatons CO2 emitted into the atmosphere from history into now and coming in the future. Um, to get about two degrees temperature rise, you see not more than 3,000 uh, gigatons of CO2 can be emitted. CO2 is accumulated in the atmosphere. It's not removed. There is an equilibrium with the oceans and with the forests, but it's not degraded. That's different from other uh, greenhouse gases like methane and N2O. They're degraded, there's a sort of equilibrium, and when you stop the emissions, 
the concentration in the atmosphere are going down. It's not the case with CO2. Very, very slowly they are going down, so it accumulates. So every megaton we add to the atmosphere is uh, adding up to the problem. Uh, up to now we have already emitted about 2,000 megatons, so it's quite urgent that we do something about it. And uh, even more urgent if we want to keep the temperature rise below one and a half degrees. Here you see colleagues of mine in this uh, put in one figure hundreds of scenarios, two degrees scenarios and business as usual scenarios. The gray lines are business as usual scenarios and the, the blue lines and the, and the green lines are two degrees scenarios. Blue is for scenarios without net negative emissions in the later part of the century to restore, so to get out CO2 from the atmosphere because we have emitted too much. The green ones, uh, the blue ones is without those negative emissions and the green ones with negative emissions. So in the first part of the century we'll emit more and later we have to restore that. We have to take out the CO2. That's also where CCS is coming. To put it in a, a simpler graph, here you see business as usual about 4,000 uh, gigatons in the rest of the century. Uh, and we have to go down to a thousand, so a steep line going down. And if we don't do that very quickly, we have to add negative emissions. And it's, it's quite urgent to keep, this, these are two degree scenarios with a 66% chance that we reach the two degrees. So it's not certain yet, 66%. To have a, a, only a 50% chance to come, with, uh, to come up with one and a half degrees we can go on with present, uh, with current emissions for about 10 years. So that's a real short time. We have to do urgently something about it. What does it mean for the Netherlands? These are gl global figures. What does it mean for the Netherlands? What's our challenge? Well, th this is what uh, our policy is aiming to do. We, we set a target of 49 percent emission reduction compared to 1990 in the year 2030. That's quite ambitious. You may ask why 49 percent and why not 50 percent? Because uh, our institute made a calculation. They said what will happen if we do it in a linear way, the reduction? Okay, we made a calculation between 2015 and 2050 <coughs> with a 95 percent reduction target and then it showed uh, a 49% reduction in 2030. And the next step was that uh, the government said, okay, this will be our policy target. That's the target right now. You also see th this means that if we go, uh, if we succeed in doing this in the coming uh, 30 years, uh, the, the budget of the Netherlands will be about three gigatons. That's 1.3% of the thousand uh, that we globally can emit. And the uh, Dutch population, uh, the share is about 0.2%. Uh, so it seems very ambitious. It's, it is very ambitious, but it's necessary to meet the, our contrib contribution to the uh, targets set in the, the Paris Agreement. To realize uh, this target in 2030, we have assessed that CCS is quite an important option because uh, you, can, uh, you can do it on a short term, relatively short term compared to other technical options. What we did in the Institute is uh, a form of backcasting. We have uh, two uh, models to uh, design uh, the, the, the future, the, the 2050 situation. And we did that uh, for uh, an 80% reduction. Here you see the blue spots, and uh, the orange spots, spots are for a 95% reduction. On the y-axis, you see the percentage of renewable energy in that system. It's going up to uh, more than 90%. 
What we are doing now in the Netherlands, we have set a target of 16% uh, in the year 2023, coming up from about 4% in the year 2013, so 12% extra in 10 years' time. And it's quite hard to meet that challenge. So you can imagine how hard it will be in uh, 30 years' time left to go up to 60, 70, or even 90% uh, renewable energy. On the x-axis you see the amount of CO2 stored in that system. There's a relationship between uh, the percentage of renewable energy, the share of renewable energy, and the amount of CO2 stored. So if you store more, you need a little less renewable energy. You also see for uh, the, the, the blue spots there are some options going to zero but most of uh, zero storage of CC, uh, CO2. But then you need so much of all the other options that we said it's very unlikely that you succeed in realizing 80% reduction. To realize the 95% production that's necessary to meet the Paris uh, challenge, uh, we don't see any options in, in the technical change uh, without uh, rigorous changes in behavior, without CCS. You cannot also uh, store more than 50, 55 megatons because there are simply no more CO2 uh, sources left in that system to capture the CO2 from. Um, uh, so that's in between about 10 and, and 55 megatons in, in the situation where at this moment we have about 160 megatons of CO2 emissions in, in the Netherlands. Uh, to show the same sort of results in another way, here you see the energy sources uh, uh, and the amount of energy used. You see the final energy use is much less than in the reference situation of a few years ago. Uh, a few years ago, uh, and still at this moment, it's mainly fossil. It's the purple uh, color. You see much more blue, wind, solar, environmental energy. But you, you also see uh, shaded areas in all the, the ver uh, variants, uh, you see in all the system options, some in combination with fossil energy and some in combination with bioenergy. And especially the combination of uh, CCS with bioenergy is uh, very important in the future. The combination with fossil is needed when some of the fossil uh, sources cannot be replaced in time by uh, new technologies, new processes. CCS or CCU, what does it mean in the system context? It's, it's part of a combination of technologies and especially, as I told you, CCS and bioenergy, they are partners partners, both, both not very beloved, I must say, uh, both with a reputation that's not so good, uh, especially for the, the people uh, who don't know the details, but they hear something, they hear it, they read it in the papers, they hear it on television. I'll tell you more about it later. Um, some words about bioenergy, because it's so important for the system and the combination with CCS. Uh, a few months ago, I had a discussion with uh, a famous uh, agricultural scientist in the Netherlands uh, who doesn't believe in bioenergy very much. And one of the reasons he says so, he says so in public too, one of the main reasons is when you use land, and also land is very scarce on this earth in the future, when we use land to convert solar energy into usable energy, PV as a technology has a much higher efficiency than plants and trees. So if that's your goal, do it with other technologies than biomass. That's his statement. But of course there's something special about biomass. It's not only en converting energy, it's also uptaking CO2. And PV is not. Um, we only can use this advantage if we don't re-emit the CO2 by using the biomass, of course. So that's quite important in a new system to look for the option to use the biomass to make the combination with CCS and to 
uh, leave it out of the atmosphere. Uh, some other sustainability aspects of biomass. Um, and it's mainly about the aspect of time. They also say, okay, biomass is good because it's a short cycle. The uptake of CO2 and the emission of CO2, so it's neutral, CO2 neutral. Over a long period, that's the case. But over shorter periods, that's not always the case. Uh, because uh, in, the, in the carbon cycle, you need time. Time to grow biomass, of course, in trees. Time uh, also when you want to use waste, woody waste, or when you want uh, residues from forest, and you see the reference situation, they are stored in landfills or they are left on the ground and degrade slowly. Uh, that also these processes of degradation also take time, some many decades of time. So we have to integrate that in, in the carbon cycle. Also when you use uh, agricultural products and you change natural land into agricultural land, the carbon content of that land will be less and it takes time to get to a new equilibrium, also a time aspect. So in, in the biomass, in the, the carbon cycle in, in of biomass, time is very important. And we'll come to the, the cycles that we have. Here you see the present, the current cycle, the fossil cycle, with uh, carbon coming out of mines and gas and oil fields and uh, going through the economy and, and put, put back in the system in the atmosphere. Of course, that's not what we want. And then the biomass idea was to get the carbon out of the atmosphere, put it through the, the system and to get it back in the atmosphere. But then we have this problem of time. We also have the problem that the, the biomass is a less efficient uh, energy carrier than, for instance, gas. So the emissions that we get from the burning of biomass to produce the same kind of electricity or heat, these emissions are higher. So that's not a problem if there's an uptake of all that CO2. But that, that is a problem when the uptake of CO2 takes a lot of time. Then it, for 10, 20, some 30, 40 years, uh, there is no real uh, emission reduction in the system when you do it this way. Only on a long term, there is this emission reduction. OK, then we're going to change it and use CCS or CCO. With CCU, you take out, you capture the, the CO2 from your system, but you use it again. So you don't emit it, you use it again. With the help of hydrogen produced from uh, renewable elec electricity mostly, so that's part of the system too. And um, you add the hydrogen, so you add some energy uh, to be able to uh, use, uh, to convert the CO2 into hydrocarbons and use them again. And that means uh, you don't use uh, so much uh, resources anymore, so that's reduced. So also the input in the atmosphere is reduced. Uh, what's very important, it's also stated, okay, this uh, magnificent example of circular enemy. I don't know what's the situation in your country, but in my country, in the Netherlands, everyone is talking about circular economy. That's the future. Uh, so we don't have only a, a transition in climate, but also to make our economy circular. And this is part of circular economy. Although the, here we have to add one warning. If you reuse hydrocarbons and you do that instead of alternative renewable energy sources, then it works quite negative. So you only do that for in case there is really no alternative than to use uh, carbon sources coming from uh, the system, mainly the fossil, uh, so to, to remove, to reduce the, the fossil resource use. And uh, if it's an alternative for, for uh, renewable energy, it's really working the wrong way. Okay, then we can also choose for CCS. It's also dependent how much carbon we need in the system, of course. If we need more carbon, more biomass, then it's more likely that we reuse uh, the, the carbon. 
if there's enough carbon in the system, we use more and more renewable uh, energy uh, in our processes and in our products, then uh, we can uh, use the CCS more. Uh, then we put out the CO2 and we don't uh, put it back in the atmosphere, but we put it back into the gas and oil fields, for instance. And that's also uh, a way of creating a circular economy. Uh, there are many people when I put this graph and say this is also a form of circular economy that they say you don't understand what circular economy means. We have to circulate within the economy. But of course, in solving a climate problem, uh, we have to circulate also uh, the streams on, on the flows on the earth. And something about CCS in the Dutch situation. It's uh, an, interest, uh, an interesting story. Many things happened. About 10 years ago, there was already a plan of an industry uh, and the government to start a project uh, on CCS. And uh, here you'll see the, the word nay. Uh, you probably recognize that's no. Uh, and because what, what, what happened was that, and that happens many cases, uh, at least in my country, uh, everything must be cost effective. So they calculated the most cost-effective way to do this demonstration project. And it was more costly to store the CO2 on the North Sea than to do it nearby the source of, uh, of the CO2 uh, on land. But that was right under a, a, a small town. And you can imagine what uh, the people said. It's not surprising that they said no to what they saw as an experiment experiment under their houses. So uh, the, the project never started, and it, uh, uh, storage on land uh, was not anymore an option. Uh, it's not, at this moment, not, not an option anymore, maybe in the long term, but not for now. Uh, it, it gave CCS a bad reputation, so a lot of bad things uh, happened um, by doing the project in the wrong way. In 2011, my institute uh, published a report about the, the long-term uh, necessity of technologies to realize at least 80% emission reduction. In that year, we, it was about 80 to 95% emission reduction. Now we believe you really need 95 in a country like the Netherlands, but at that time we thought maybe 80% was enough. And this uh, report said, uh, as I showed you earlier, CCS is a necessary technology. Um, the government people agreed, they said so, but on the other hand, they took no action. There was a climate policy letter, uh, the report was mentioned, the necessity of the technology was mentioned, but policy did nothing. Two years later, 2013, there was a, a big process going on to get a new energy agreement in the Netherlands. A lot of parties, not only NGOs, industries, uh, uh, all kind of uh, separate industries also, uh, local authorities, many people involved in the process. And they all signed for an, uh, an energy agreement. And uh, they, they knew they had to say something about CCS because they knew it was an important option for the future. But uh, in the end, it was not a long-term agreement. It was a short-term agreement going up to 2020 and for renewable energy 2023, so no long-term. So they didn't say too much about CCS. The only thing they, s they agreed upon that there had to be some sort of strategy a vision of what we, ha we had to do with CCS in the future, in the Netherlands. Okay, that uh, should be there within one year. And uh, our institute was waiting and see what happened. Uh, nothing happened, and up to now we don't have this strategy come out. There, uh, there was a new idea for a project, what we call the road project. There was also a formation or for a, a substantial subsidy from Europe for the project. Uh, but also the Dutch 
industry and, and the government had to add uh, something to the project. But it was a CCS for a coal-powered plant. And uh, more and more there was discussion about the future of coal-powered plants. Also in the Netherlands, we heard something about the situation in Italy. Well, about the same is happening in the Netherlands. In this energy agreement, it's all already said that uh, some of the power, power plants with coal had to be closed. And uh, at this moment, uh, in, in the new uh, plans of the government, all of the, the power plants had to close. And that was coming up already, the, that idea, the, the past few, few years. Uh, so uh, the, this project also never started. So it's, it's a series of no's, no's, no, and uh, nothing done. And what didn't help, of course, that NGOs were not only campaigning, uh, campaigning against uh, coal-fired plants, but also against CCS. Uh, as I told you, the idea of the young lady uh, who represented the NGOs, she, uh, she told that she didn't like CCS and the NGOs don't like CCS at this moment. Although they have, I know they have their doubts if uh, for climate policy, and that's also quite important for them, they have to look for some sort of compromise now. We have to see what's coming out. Uh, but until now they are uh, campaigning against it and uh, they want 100% renewable energy, especially solar and wind energy. And we warn them, they are very optimistic, and in their scenario, we say, they say we have a scenario without uh, CCS, but that's a scenario with a lot of behavioral changes. So uh, animal food-based uh, products are not used uh, anymore. We are not going to fly uh, so much anymore, almost not anymore. So uh, you wouldn't be here. Uh, in, in that respect, I wouldn't be here. Uh, so they believe in another, some, and we say that's quite optimi optimistic, but quite extreme too, so it's, uh, we don't agree with those scenarios, but it's part of their campaigning. Um, last year, there was a new gov governmental agreement, and our prime minister said that was the greenest ever. And part of that was this uh, reduction target of 49% in 2030. That's quite some more than Europe is asking from the Netherlands. So in that respect, the Prime Minister is right. And there was another interesting thing uh, in that uh, agreement. They said, okay, we also have targets for different sectors, also for industry, and especially for industry, we see CCS as the most important technology. There was even uh, an amount of about 20 megatons uh, capture uh, for the industry indicatively, and a lot of people were quite surprised that it was so much. Uh, at this moment, new calculations are going on to see what's real, but CCS is indeed uh, an important options, option. So uh, this year, uh, what was also in the government plan was we need a new uh, agreement, so the, the, the energy agreement from five years ago uh, we, is for the short period, for until 2020. We now need a new agreement. We call it a climate agreement more than an energy agreement because also agriculture is an important part of climate uh, policy. Uh, and the question, of course, it is uh, what's in it for CCS in this agreement? Um, one of the actions already taken was a sort of a draft idea of a roadmap for CCS in the Netherlands. And the question is, uh, does it have to be a Dutch roadmap or do we want a European roadmap? Here you see a sort of a design for the system, quite simple. You, you recognize most, most of it, you're more specialist on CCS than I am. You see the capture site, you see the transport site. But uh, for my country, it's still a choice. Uh, do we have enough storage capacity at the Dutch part of the North Sea? Uh, empty gas fields especially. Uh, probably, if we don't want to store too much, that will be enough. On the other hand, will there be a European plan to store much more on sea and use uh, aquifers in Norway with huge capacities in theory? Uh, and to have also a transport system 
into that, uh, that uh, storage uh, capacity. So still some strategies have to be worked out to see what's, uh, what we will do. Some are more uh, long-term options and others are more short-term. So uh, I think the time uh, aspect will also make uh, uh, part of the choice. Uh, and what will have to be worked out in, uh, in this roadmap? Of course, technology development to improve cap capture technology, to do some demonstration projects in, in that, uh, uh, to, do, to get to some uh, cost reduction especially, maybe also to improve projects to be uh, able to capture ease more easily because you have concentra more concentrated uh, flows uh, than, for instance, in the steel industry. Um, and uh, I, I want to add one question, maybe it's for you to discuss later. Is uh, carbon capture an option on big ships? Uh, we see uh, on ships and also uh, on in planes, they use car hydrocarbons, a lot of emissions, not part of national targets, but uh, becoming more and more important. So we're looking to technologies to reduce the emissions over there. So. Of course, for CCS, you, you need, need large-scale uh, uh, sources. Are ships large-scale enough? Can we do that? Second part is the transport part. And that's not only a technical. Of course, we have to build pipelines for ships, whatever we need. But one of the questions is, who will be responsible for that? Um, if you capture CO2, uh, whom are you going to sell or to give it to? Uh, there's not yet a party to do so. Uh, will it be a, a public affair to do so? Will it be a private one? How is it organized? Will it be a public-private cooperation? All things that have to be worked out. Of course, uh, included in that discussion is who's going to pay for it. So not only the, the transport side is also an institutional uh, question, also the storage side who will be responsible for storage, when there will be some sort of leakage, will, who will be responsible for that. Uh, also, questions that have to be answered. And uh, the, the, so there needs to be a lot of uh, preparation uh, to, to get to a real system change. And here you see the, the prepara preparation side of, of the CCS. But, uh, I can state that in general, when you want to, to realize a transition to a 95 emission reduction in, for instance, in my country, and the, the big change in traffic, the big change in, in the building environment, in the industry. It's not only a, a technical uh, question that has to be answered, it's also an institutional one, and there are also many uh, aspects of uh, infrastructure that have to be uh, dealt with. Okay, that's my presentation. If there's some time for questions.